Welcome to Good Shepherd Baptist Church streaming services. Catch us at goodshepherdbaptist.org or on our Facebook page every Sunday at 10 a.m. Also join us on Mondays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. The days and times listed on your screen are also available on the website. In just a few moments, we will be joining Bishop Jeffrey L. Reeves Sr., Senior Pastor of Good Shepherd Baptist Church with today's message. We can be reached at goodshepherdbaptist.org. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. And giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or, using the app, click the Give Online icon. Registration is open for the Practical Life Institute's spring term. All classes are free and will be held virtually via Zoom from May 16th through July 2nd. Classes include The New Testament You Never Knew, Sundays at 9 a.m. The Old Testament Journey, Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. The Book of Philippians, also Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. And The Book of Ephesians, Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. For class descriptions, facilitators, and registration links, go to practicallife.org. We are excited for the beginning of this new term. That's the Practical Life Institute Spring Term, May 16th through July 2nd. Register now. We'd like to thank everyone who played a part in the Petersburg distribution launch here at Good Shepherd on April 21st. But there's still more work to be done. Our next food distribution date will be Wednesday, May 19th. To register to be a volunteer, you may call the church at 804-732-5969 or register online at chesterfieldfoodbank.org. God bless you for being a blessing to the area. Good Shepherd's next Park and Praise will be Sunday, May 16th at 10 a.m. As always, we will praise and worship by way of this in-car worship experience. Please plan to arrive by 9.45 a.m. You may listen via the sound system or by crystal clear audio from your FM radio. That's Park and Praise, Sunday, May 16th at 10 a.m. We look forward to seeing you there. Daily I shall worship thee. O Lamb of God, who, who died for me, who extended endless mercy, daily I shall worship thee father we bless your name tonight we thank you O oh god for calling us together again at this hour we sit and we surround ourselves around your word we are literally sitting within the doors of our tents we are eagerly awaiting to hear a word from you We pray, O God, again that you will come down our souls to greet. You will allow your glory to fill the mercy seat. O God, have your way tonight as we share your word with your people. We pray, O God, that you will illumine our minds to the teaching of the truth. We know that we have within us already the capacity to receive it. It is simply our prayer that we will receive it with an open heart. Now, God, please manage my mind, amplify my voice, set my soul ablaze with the Holy Spirit. Is my prayer in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And thank God. 
God bless you guys. Thank you for joining us tonight for our Wednesday service, our wow service. We are grateful to God for your presence. And uh, we have what we believe will be a life-changing word for you tonight. Just want to ask you to turn with us in your Bibles or your devices as we reference Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. You know that it is a familiar passage. Um, but I want to share it with you tonight if I can. That is Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. And in the New Living Translation of the Bible, the scripture says this. It says, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. And then verse 2, it says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Thus ends the reading of the Word of God. I want to invite your attention back to verse number 1, where Paul says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. I'll stop right there. That's all I want to talk about tonight. I want to talk to you about giving yourself to God. Giving yourself to God. The story is told of a missionary who, <clears throat> excuse me, was talking one day to a new convert by the name of Pablo. And he said to Pablo, he said, Pablo, he said, if you had 100 sheep, would you give 50 of them to the Lord's work? And that new convert, Pablo, said, absolutely, I would give 50 of those sheep to the Lord's work. And then the missionary said to him, said, Pablo, if you had 50 cows, would you give 25 of those cows to the Lord's work? And Pablo said, absolutely, of course I would. I'd be more than happy to do that. And then the missionary said to him, he said, now, Pablo, if you had two pigs, would you give one of those pigs to the Lord's work? And Pablo said, that's not fair. You know I have two pigs. But I want to suggest to you, my friends, that when it comes to us giving ourselves to God, for many of us, the notion of giving ourselves to God is nothing more uh, than a rhetorical reasoning in our minds. We, we give ourselves to God in theory. That when it comes to actually giving oneself to God, it is an area in which all of us struggle. And I want to suggest tonight that this is the reason why the Apostle Paul talking to the church at Rome begins with the language that suggests that what he is proposing is urgent. He says, I beg you, I plead with you to give yourselves to God. He said, because of the Lord's mercies and because of all that the Lord has done for you. Isn't it interesting that Paul has got to beg the saints to give themselves to God. I'm talking about those of us who claim to have already done so. Those of us who, by our own admission, claim to be those who are a part of the, Lord, the Lord's church. We say, in fact, that we are not just saved, but that we're sanctified and we've been baptized with fire. We say that we are living a life where we are following the Lord why then would Paul have to say to the church at Rome, and may I suggest that he's saying it to us as well, begging us, pleading us to give ourselves to God? The first idea is this, perhaps that Paul is saying to the church and the text is saying to us that we must continue to give ourselves to God or don't stop giving yourself to God, that giving yourself to God or offering yourself to God as a gift 
It's not a one-time affair. It is a lifetime experience. You are called to give yourself to the Lord every single day, every waking moment, every conscious moment of your life. Uh, must be consumed with us yielding and surrendering and offering ourselves to God as a gift. Paul says it is our reasonable service. I, I, I like the idea uh, that the urgent request of, of Paul in the text is to tell us that we ought to continue to give ourselves to God. Don't stop. Because you do know that in the course of a 24-hour period, the enemy can put any number of things in your way that will get you off track. And where, as you were once giving yourself to God, you may wake up one day and discover uh, that your pursuit has come to a screeching halt, that, that the same drive and ambition and determination that you had to give your life to God in a way that is meaningful, in a way that manifests the kingdom, in a way that magnifies his name. You may wake up one day and discover that life has gotten in the way, that the enemy has gained the advantage, and you're looking at yourself, and you're saying, how did I ever get to this place? Well, I hear Paul saying, listen, he said, don't you sleep on this. You keep on giving yourself to God. Before I give you what the Lord has given me uh, to share with you tonight, I've, I have, as it were, a testimony to offer. Amen. I shouldn't bring this up, but I can't talk about y'all, so I'll talk about myself, so I'll testify tonight. And so if you'll permit me to do that, give an honor to God, to the pastor, to the saints and friends. I want to thank and praise God for the life that I have now in him. But I've got to tell you the truth. That after years of being saved, after years of serving God, after years of preaching his word and pastoring his people, that I too have uh, gotten out of the bed and looked at my life and discovered that where I used to be, I'm no longer there and I have to make up ground. That as I have given myself to God in the past, that there are spaces and there are stages in my life where uh, where how I was once giving myself to God, I'm no longer doing that, and I have to get back on track. And I want to tell you that I believe I'm not by myself. I believe that our life with the Lord is meant to be a progression. Amen. Not just a pursuit, but a progression. That the pursuit that we uh, are, are involved in trying to give ourselves to God, there needs to be some measure of progression. We ought to be getting better at it. And we ought to be able to see fruit from it. There ought to be growth as a result of our pursuit of God and our yielding and giving ourselves to God as a gift. Got five things for you. I'm going to let you all go. I think there are five, might be six. Don't know, but I want to take my time and hurry up and get out your way. Can I tell you, first of all, what Paul says to us in the text, he says, listen, you got to keep on giving yourself to God until the sacrificial becomes intentional. I said, keep on giving yourself to God until the sacrificial becomes intentional. Let me say it another way. Keep giving yourself to God until the sacrificial becomes habitual. I told you before, Amen. That yielding yourself to God as a sacrifice is not an easy thing to do. Most of us can give ourselves to God, amen, when it's convenient for us. But what about when yielding yourself to God, amen, creates a context, come on, amen, where you are going to have to make a sacrifice of yourself, amen, in order to stay connected to God. But can I tell you, child of God, keep on giving, even when it's hard, amen, even when it demands a sacrifice, keep on giving yourself to God until your sacrificial becomes habitual. Amen. Listen, how can I say this? Today or tonight as I, as I speak to you, you may say that by making a sacrifice to give myself to God, that's what I do. But you ought to keep on giving yourself to God until it becomes who you are. Amen. It's, it's a part of, amen, your normal practice. Keep on giving yourself to God. Keep giving yourself to God until the sacrificial becomes intentional and habitual. But then you've got to keep giving yourself to God until the actual becomes acceptable. 
Because a whole lot of stuff, y'all, that we give to God, I hate to say this, God don't want that. As a matter of fact, he didn't ask for it. Amen. We have a tendency of giving the Lord what we want him to have and not giving the Lord what he wants. Think for a moment. You've heard me share this illustration in the past. But, you know, you get an opportunity to go to your favorite restaurant. And you, as, as old mama would say, you got your mouth set, amen, for something that's, uh, that you want to eat. And you get there and you order it uh, from the waiter or the waitress. Uh, perhaps if, you, if you're like me, you want a, a ribeye steak. Oh, God, help me. A ribeye steak and a baked potato and some asparagus on the side. And only to place the order and then have the waiter or the waitress come back uh, with a salad and a glass of water. You say, this is not what I ordered. I ordered a ribeye steak. I ordered a baked potato and some asparagus. And uh, the waiter or the waitress looks at you and says, yeah, but I was looking at you. You don't need all that food. This is all I'm going to give you. How do you think the Lord would feel, amen, when you and I do the same thing to him? He asks us for one thing. He orders one thing, but we make up our mind, come on, to disobey the order and give the Lord what we want. Can I tell you, child of God, amen, that your service to God, your actual service has got to be acceptable. And I mind you now, you may not know everything about what God wants. That's why you got to keep yielding yourself to God. Keep yourself connected to God. Keep giving yourself to God so that you can continue to discover uh, what God wants from your life. Amen. You just can't give God anything and think the Lord is going to be satisfied with that. I hear that all the time. You've heard it too. Maybe it's come from your lips. Maybe if it didn't come from your lips, it was down in your heart. Amen. When you, amen, came up short of what God required, amen, your excuse was the Lord knows my heart. But I want to tell you, child of God, amen, I ain't trying to beat nobody up. All I'm saying is don't, don't settle for that. Don't stay on that level, amen. You keep on giving yourself to God until your actual becomes acceptable. Let me go another further and tell you your sacrificial has got to be intentional and habitual. Your actual has got to become acceptable. But then you got to keep on giving yourself to God until the uncomfortable becomes reasonable. I said until the uncomfortable becomes reasonable. Can I tell you, child of God, amen, you got to realize that the service that you and I are called to give to God as we offer ourselves the whole of ourselves as, as a gift to God. Amen. We know that by nature of the sacrifice, amen, that sometimes it can be uncomfortable. But when it becomes uncomfortable, when it's inconvenient, the moment that you want to check out and say, amen, this is just too much for me. Maybe the Lord has given me more than I can handle. May I suggest to you that's the time, amen, to dig in a little deeper. That's the time to continue to give yourself to the Lord and to you can begin to understand, amen, that that which is uncomfortable for you, amen, is also reasonable. Let me try one more time. Amen. The, the service that you give that is uncomfortable for you to give it, amen, you continue to give it because you realize compared, I wish somebody would talk to me now, to the service that Christ gave to you, amen, amen, for your salvation. Listen, whatever the Lord requires of you as as uncomfortable as it may be, it is absolutely reasonable. Amen. Can I tell you, child of God, you got to understand that there ain't no glory without some suffering. You're going to have to suffer. Amen. And you got to realize, child of God, if you're going to serve God and give yourself as a gift to God, amen, that sometimes the giving of that gift will put you in a space where you are uncomfortable. Amen. But, but listen, don't have a pity party. Amen. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't walk around and act like somebody owe you something because don't nobody owe you nothing. Jesus done pay that. Amen. You owe the Lord something. Amen. Realize that the, the service that is uncomfortable, that simultaneously it is also reasonable. It is reasonable, comparatively speaking. It is reasonable. Amen. Come on. The suffering that you and I deal with, it ain't like you hanging up on a cross. Come on now. Amen. Whatever God has called and demands that you go through in order to bring glory to his name, amen, it in no way compares, amen, to him giving his son, amen, as an act of his love and his son, amen, 
giving his life so that you and I can be saved. I said it's reasonable. Amen. I wish somebody would type that in the comments for me and just say it's the least I can do. It's the least I can do after all that the Lord has done for me. You know, all I have on Wednesdays is just a little homily, just a little something, amen, to get you through the week. But can I tell you, as I, as I come to a close, that you and I are called to continue to give ourselves to God again until the sacrificial becomes intentional and habitual, until the actual becomes acceptable, until the uncomfortable becomes reasonable. But we're also called to give ourselves to God until the spiritual becomes intellectual. And let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is a level of spirituality, amen, that is absent and dearth of any depth, any, any true meaning, amen. It is shallow at best because sometimes we equate, amen, the spiritual with simply being emotional. But may I suggest to you, my friends, amen, that we are going to have to continue to give ourselves to God, amen, until the spiritual is not only emotional, come on, but it is also intellectual. Be not conformed to this world, do you hear me? But be transformed, here it comes, by the renewing of your mind, amen. Spiritual people, amen, are intellectual people. I wish somebody would talk to me. Can I tell you, amen, that you don't come to the Lord and leave your mind at the house. Amen. You, you don't yield yourself to the Lord. I wish I had a witness here. And then all of a sudden, amen, as a process of your salvation, you simultaneously go brain dead. No. Amen. That is a cognitive, amen, element that must be brought to bear. I wish I had a witness here. You got to be able to think on things. Come on. Amen. Things that are honest and pure and lovely and of good report. There's a cognitive element, amen, that the saints have got to bring to bear. Amen. We Listen, and I'm not against emotion. Y'all understand that. I, I hate it when anybody, amen, wants to try to beat me shouting. Come on. And praising God. But I got to tell you, child of God, there comes a time, amen, where you're going to have to take your breath, amen, and then take the next step in faith. I'm telling you, the spiritual has got to become intellectual. Here it comes. What, what do I mean by that? Because, amen, by the renewing of your mind, amen, you are ex then exposed, I wish I had a witness here, to the truth of a spirituality, amen, that you cannot know, amen, by simply being in the world. Let me try one more time. You can be in the church with an unrenewed mind, amen, and be manifest a spirituality, I wish I had a witness here, that is void and absent of the truth. The Bible clearly tells us, come on, amen, that, that there's, there's a time coming, and, and in fact, the time is here, amen, where people are not going to endure sound doctrine. It talks about, amen, having a, a, a faith, as it were, or a godliness, as it were, amen, that, was just, that is truly absent, amen, of the Spirit. Listen, you got to keep on giving yourself to God, amen, to the point that you get a revelation that doesn't come from flesh and blood. I said, the Lord has renewed the mind. Can I tell you, child of God, you don't want a spirituality, amen, where you look like everybody else and talk like everybody else everybody else. Amen. That, that the language of your faith, I wish I had a witness here, amen, mimics and mirrors everybody else. You ought to have your own walk with God. And sometimes, child of God, you've got to allow yourself to be in a space yielded to God, continuing to give yourself to God to the point that God can talk to you by way of the Spirit. Amen. And the spiritual, listen, the spiritual Spirit, the spiritual becomes intellectual. That the, how can I say this? The, the, the manifestation of your spirit life is also seen, amen, in your uh, intellectual ability, amen, to accept and to embrace the things of God. Can I tell you, amen, Jesus was clear when he was talking to Nicodemus. He said, look here, bro. He said, all the stuff you won't know, you can know it, but you ain't going to know it till you've been born again. Let me try that one more time. I said, I know you won't know it. You want all the secrets to the trade, but I'm telling you, you're not going to know it until you've been born again. And I got to tell you, child of God, you're not going to be born again until you yield yourself, amen, to God through Jesus Christ. I want to let y'all go because I, I feel something. 
something happening to me. But I got to tell you, child of God, you got to continue to give yourself until the spiritual becomes intellectual. But lastly, you got to give yourself until the usual becomes an original. Let me try that one more time. This is the whole piece about being transformed. Amen. Can I tell you, child of God? He said, listen, he goes on to say, be not conformed to this world. Amen. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let me try that one more time. Amen. There is, amen. How can I say this? Amen. That th there is a context. Amen. A worldly context. Amen. That we often see evident. Amen. In the church and amongst the saints. Amen. And, and, and it's, it's, it's normal. It's usual. Whether it's religions in the West or whether it's uh, 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 faith expressions and some other places around the globe. I mean, you, you will see a certain similarity, amen, amongst people, amen, of like mind and like faith. But can I tell you, child of God, amen, you want to give yourself again to God until you, to the point that you don't mimic and mirror everybody else, amen. You don't want everybody to look at you and every time you dance, you dance like everybody else. And every time you praise God, it looked like the last person that praised God. No, you want to have a personal relationship with God until the usual and normal, amen, of your faith becomes an original. Amen. Don't listen. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. In other words, Paul said, let God change you into a new person, amen, by changing the way you think. And then here it comes. The Bible says that Paul says, and then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Can I tell you, as I close tonight, amen, that the will of God for your life, amen, is good and pleasing and perfect. And as you're yielding yourself to God tonight and you're trying to figure all of that out and it's uncomfortable, amen, it's inconvenient. I wish I had a witness here. It requires sacrifice and it's not altogether what it should be. Can I tell you, just hang in there. Keep on giving yourself to God, amen. Don't give up because what God has in store for you is better than anything you ever knew. Can I tell you that the will of God for you is good and pleasing and perfect? Let me try it one more time. It's just like, amen, somebody creating a meal, as it were, or cooking. And you know that when they're preparing the meal, they're putting in the, in the meal all kinds of, of different ingredients. And independently and by themselves, amen, it's not much. Come on. But when you put it all together at the end when the meal has finally been prepared, amen, you are then able to tell how good and how pleasing and how perfect it is. And so I want to close and tell you that you're not going to know, amen, all of the good things that God has in store for you, amen, if you give up now. You got to continue to give yourself to God, amen. You can't come on, throw in the towel now. Can you, if you're around anybody on this Wednesday evening, can you just tell them that you come too far to quit now, amen. Just continue to hang in there and continue to give yourself to God because the Bible says that if you do so, amen, that you're going to learn. Can I unpack that for you? The Bible says that you're going to learn how good it is. Amen. You're not going to know it by a process of osmosis, but you're going to have to go through a few things. Amen. You're going to have to feel sometimes like you're left out there languishing and just waiting on the Lord to come to your rescue. There are going to be times when you give yourself to God. God, uh, that they're going to be people uh, that appear that they're not doing the same thing. You're going to feel like you're all by yourself. And there are times when you're going to wonder, amen, why should I continue the fight? Uh, but I want to encourage you tonight and tell you to hold on. Yes, Lord, I ought not do this, but I'm going to go ahead anyway. I said, hold on just a little while longer and understand that God, he's got something in store for you. I wonder, can you lay hands on yourself and say, God's got something in store for me? I don't know exactly what it is. Amen. It's wrapped up and packaged. Amen. Right now is hidden and veiled. 
jail because I got to tell you I know it's out there but the only other thing is that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard the wonderful thing that God has in store the only thing I know is that whatever it is God has it and the Holy Spirit as I yield myself to God he is showing me bits and pieces I get a sneak preview of coming attractions I get a revelation of what's up ahead and all I can tell you tonight is that I don't know everything about it but I know it's good I know it's pleasing and I know it's perfect come on somebody help me type in the comments up and say God's got something else come on somebody else put in there God's got something more come on somebody else type in the comments and say God ain't through blessing you if you just hang in there the world can do what they want to but you make up your mind amen and give yourself to God can you throw your hands in the air and say my heart is fixed and my mind is made up I'm staying with God can you lift your hands and shout yes glory to God I ought not play with this I said can you open your mouth and give God glory say God I thank you that serving you is going to pay off can somebody shout yes I'm gonna stop there I, I better not do that I'm telling you child of God the word of the Lord for you tonight is to continue to give yourself to God don't stop because it gets a little rough don't stop because you get a little weary and tired this is not just a life journey it is also a learning process and the only way for you to discover and experience all that God has for you, you've got to remain determined to go all the way. I'm not going to bother you all no more tonight. It's been a long day for everybody, but can you just do me one more favor? And don't just do it for me, do it. and make it your own personal testimony. If you don't feel it, don't type it. But if you feel it, type in the comments, I'm determined to go all the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, I'm determined to go all the way. I, I have given myself to the Lord. And I'm telling you, even tonight, after everything I've been through, my heart is still fixed and my mind still made up i'm going all the way and as i go through life i'm learning every day that what god has for me is good hallelujah it's pleasing and it is perfect god knows exactly what you need he wants to give it to you the real question for all of us tonight is how bad do we want it? May I suggest to you that what God has promised is proprietary. It's not with anybody else. It remains with God. If you want what God has for you, you got to want God too. You can't want what he has in his hand and refuse to seek his face. Would you continue? Give yourself to God come on bow your heads with me tonight as we pray father we love you and thank you again for the richness of your word we thank you Lord for the text that is tailored to teach us that in these last days there's a sense of urgency that must be applied to our faith we ain't we ain't got as long as we used to have 
we got to give ourselves to you until our sacrificial becomes habitual, until our actual becomes acceptable, until the uncomfortable becomes reasonable, until the spiritual becomes intellectual, and until our normal becomes an original. Tired of looking like everybody else. God, we want to be who you want us to be. And if we stick out like a sore thumb, if we look like an oddball, we take comfort in knowing that we're in good company. You too came to your own, and your own didn't even receive you. We thank God that as many as received you, to them you gave the power to become the sons and daughters of God, even them that believe on your name. So we know it's going to be all right. Bless your people now. May we take this word with us. May we hide it in our hearts. May we place it in our proverbial pockets, pulling it out in the future, reminding ourselves of your word, gaining confidence as we go forward to hang in there until you come back and get us. This is my prayer, I pray. I ask it now in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And everyone said with me, amen. God bless you tonight, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for tuning in. I pray that the word of God has been a blessing to you. We look forward to seeing you soon. We know Mother's Day is coming on Sunday. And please tune in, amen. We have an exciting word, an exciting preacher, amen. Amen, exciting singing coming on Sunday. And then on the following Sunday, please remember as, as it has been announced, Amen. We're going to have our park and praise service. Can't wait to see you in person. Amen. I might not be able to put my hands on you. Amen. But I can pray for you in Jesus' name. God bless you until next time we see you. Amen. We commend you into the care of God. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us today for Good Shepherd Services. Giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or, using the app, click the Give Online icon. Follow us on social media on Facebook at Good Shepherd Baptist, Twitter and Instagram at Good Shepherd BC. And the Good Shepherd app is yet another great tool to keep connected. Download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. We air every Sunday on Fox Richmond at 7.30 a.m. Please watch and support the broadcast. Good Shepherd Baptist Church, 2223 South Crater Road in Petersburg, Virginia. You may call at 804-732-5969. Building a church, developing a community, expanding services, and impacting lives. We thank you for the support of this ministry. See you next time.